I've been thinking about this and my grandparents, I have one left and they've all been on their way out like in the last few years. And I just see how they live, how they've always lived, how they talk. They, they don't self victimize at all. Like they are, they've never been the victims. Right. I look at my parents. I look at how my dad lives, my mom lives and you know, I study them right from my childhood to now they don't victimize themselves. And then I look at me and my siblings. We all share that syndrome. And I'm not blaming this on my parents. I look at my friends. I look at my peers. I look at my generation. I look at TikTok, right? Like, you know, you see it everywhere. There's something about what happened uh, growing up in the 90s, maybe even the 80s, that began to encourage this behavior and raising your kids so they they you know they can feel bad for themselves so it's like it's okay to feel bad for themselves there's a book called the coddling of the american mind by uh hate and uh forget but um they talk about that in more recent terms of how our culture has just been like coddled like no one knows how to fend for themselves take responsibility because it's like oh you know the government will take care of you or mom and dad will take care of you or like everything's okay no one knows how to do anything on their own I think it started a lot more than I, I, I think it's probably started in the eighties, whatever it is. I'm not trying to throw out conspiracy theories here, but I do recognize it and I don't see it in the older generations. I feel like they just owned their shit. They took care of it. Uh, I do see them blinded to a lot of stuff too, when it comes to psyche and trauma. Um, it's not like I'm trying to just glorify them and demean my generation, but like, I just, I just noticed that they didn't, they didn't have that victimization mentality. And, uh, I do enjoy the fact that I get to explore it though. So I'm grateful to have been blessed with the perception to recognize it and to decide like, Hey, I don't want this for my life. What am I going to do about it? And having this journey and parts of me could feel like, Oh, I'm wasting time. Like, Oh, all the stuff I could have got done. But what's ironic is that as soon as I start exploring that, figuring that out, like there's, they say a two month integration period after ayahuasca. And, um, I start exploring that and suddenly this is, this is actually, I said earlier, I couldn't think of anything where I would feel bad for myself, but I had this memory of when I was probably, I don't know, seven or eight or nine. And I was at Christmas with all my cousins and the whole family. And my grandpa was Santa Claus. And there were all these presents everywhere and Santa Claus would read, Oh, this is for Johnny. This is for you. And I didn't get a present. Like it took like almost to the very end and there was no present for me. And so I eventually just left and I was like feeling so sad and so bad for myself. And I didn't want to say anything. Um, I don't know if I, I didn't want to complain. Like I, I, I wanted to feel bad for myself. I didn't want to be like, what the fuck, you know, dad, mom, like, auntie where's my present like i just left to feel bad for myself and i like hid under a table <laughs> but anyway uh i just remember now like during that last relationship with the australian every time i would feel bad for myself because she wasn't fair to me uh she wasn't accommodating my feelings that that christmas would come to mind and i would use it as a as a gateway to feel bad for myself to cry myself to sleep now it's not like i did that all the time but i did do it Okay, everyone. Okay, world. I cried myself to sleep feeling bad for myself because of a Christmas like for 20 years, 30 years ago. But my point is, is that I kept that. Uh, is it trauma? Is it really like trauma to say I didn't get a present? I guess emotional. Uh, but, uh, I kept that with me and I held on to it as a way to feel bad for myself. After those ayahuasca ceremonies, I would notice this, that trigger like something happened that wasn't for me or some woman didn't like accommodate me. And I noticed, I noticed like that, that neural pathway, like wanting to, to go down that route. And like, it just couldn't, it stopped. And I tried to grab it and I couldn't like, I could not feel bad for myself. It just, it literally rewired something in my brain where like, I just couldn't feel bad for myself anymore. I couldn't pull that. I have that memory now as just a memory. It's not like a, you know, you know, those memories that bring up trauma and like, you know, they trigger some emotion. It's, it's no longer that it's just a memory and I'm sharing it on a podcast and laughing about it. But like, 
I couldn't feel bad for myself anymore. And then sure enough, like I said, two months later, I met my now wife within four months of meeting her. We were pregnant and now we're five years into having a family together and life is amazing. So my point with all of it is that I, I, I do truly believe that having the opportunity to explore my psyche in that way, this victimization mentality, whether it's a product of me or my parents or my society or what, who cares, exploring that opened up what was necessary for me to create life, to bring life into the world. I never wanted to be a father. I never wanted a family. I never had any desire for any of that. <laughs> but now here I am and I love it.